Carl, is there a reason we're going to talk about domain names today? Yes, there is. So tune in to the end of the video to hear that story. But first, let's talk about McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's is a monolithic company responsible for more cases of childhood obesity than Game Boys and Doritos combined. So they, of course, have an internet presence. However, in the 1990s, the company was so unaware of what the internet even was, they didn't even bother to register the domain name McDonald's.com. I just can't comprehend why McDonald's would not have just immediately bought McDonald's.com. Yeah, a writer for Wired called Josh Quitner thought that too, when he was researching a piece about how Fortune 500 companies were adapting to the internet. And when he realised McDonald's.com was available to be bought by anybody, he decided to be a nice guy and contact McDonald's about it. Quitner, rather than snapping up the domain name himself like an asshole, decided to be a good guy and contacted McDonald's's PR department and politely informed them that the domain McDonald's.com was available to buy. But yeah, to be honest, it's a good job he did call them, because if he, he hadn't called them and they hadn't got it then, anyone else could have had it. Well, anyone else could have bought it, couldn't they? And Brad, you may have noticed that we've just started recording this video, so you know the bullshit hasn't started yet, because when Quitner called up McDonald's PR department and politely informed them the domain mcdonalds.com is available, that PR representative said to him, and I quote, what's the internet? For our younger viewers who are currently scratching their head about how a company as large as McDonald's didn't know what the internet was, this happened in 1994. So that's, uh, what, is that 24 years ago? Yeah, about 24, 25 years ago, depending on the exact date. So for our younger viewers at home, just to put in perspective how quickly the internet has gained prominence and become like a ubiquitous aspect of everyday life, just 24 years ago, a company as large as McDonald's didn't have the foresight to know the internet would be a big deal. That's in our lifetime. That's yeah. how short amount of time. Yeah, that's it like is. <laughs> when I was born, people didn't know what the internet was. I still remember getting the internet. Oh, I do as well. I Dial remember, up. I remember getting a disc. <laughs> like, for the younger people, they're probably like, what the fuck? We got a disc with the internet on it. And you couldn't use the internet if your dad wanted to talk on the fucking phone. And I remember waiting like three hours for a fucking stick fights video on ZhaoZhao.com to load up and being amazed at that shit. Now I can bring it up on my phone in like four seconds. Ready? Steady, go! For younger people watching now, like, what the fuck is this old man? This old ass man, this ancient man, it's this Fu Manchu beard growing on me now, talking about this stuff. Just play the dial up noise. Oh, the dial up noise. This is the noise I had to hear every time I wanted to go on Neopets. So early days of the internet, I suppose it's understandable that they may not have known what it was. Yes, it is. What's less understandable though is that after Quitner tried to explain to this PR representative what the internet was and told them that it's probably going to be a big fucking deal in like a couple of years time and a lot of big companies are snapping up domain names now because anyone can buy them because this was the wild west days of the internet where like domain squatting and stuff, there weren't laws against that sort of thing. And he patiently explains to them, like, right now, McDonald's.com could be bought by anybody, even me. Well, I can see where this is going. They didn't buy it, did they? They did not. Even after Quitner explained the simplest terms he could, that at that moment in time, anybody, including himself or even Burger King, could buy McDonald's.com and just fill the website with lies about their business. McDonald's were like, we're not interested. We don't think it's a thing we're going to pursue as a company. So do you know what Quitner did? What? He contacted Burger King. I'm the marvelous, magical Burger King. I can do most anything. Like Quinton had done with McDonald's, he called up a PR representative for Burger King and informed them that the domain name for their biggest rival was available to buy on the internet. So Burger King snapped it up? No, they didn't, because the PR representative for Burger King told them they didn't know what the internet was. <laughs> But here's the best part. After Quitner explained to this Burger King representative, you know, the internet's going to be a big deal and it has a lot of potential and other massive companies such as yourselves are buying up domain names, which remember were quite cheap and still are quite cheap, you know, just in case to stop other people doing that and like, you know, blackmailing them down the line. The Burger King representative told him, in which case we don't see why we'd want to buy McDonald's.com because that's got nothing to do with us. <sighs> <laughs> and just for a moment, Brad, just imagine if this scenario occurred like now. And imagine if McDonald's.com, the domain name, through some bizarre confluence of events, was available to buy. Do you think Burger King would buy it now? Oh, yeah. They would snap that shit. I'm not even Burger King. I want Wendy's to buy it and get the person who runs their fucking Twitter account to make McDonald's.com. 
Does that mean that Burger King also wouldn't have had BurgerKing.com? Oh yeah, she points out Burger King also said they weren't interested in buying BurgerKing.com. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, they didn't buy that asset. That was also available when Quitner was writing the article. The thing is, I don't think even if Wendy's or Burger King or something got hold of McDonald's.com, they would run it any worse than McDonald's have done themselves. Because Brad, you're going to put this in. We talked about it before and we're going to talk about it again. Put in the guy who wants to fuck the burger. If you're currently wondering what the fuck I'm talking about, because these images don't exactly tell the whole story, a few years ago, McDonald's launched an ad campaign where they tried to appeal to the kids and some of that hip lingo they're all using, and someone somewhere in the marketing department had heard the term, I'd hit that, and didn't know what it meant. So what they did is they put that phrase underneath a guy giving a burger the fuck eyes and ran out on a load of websites, and then immediately removed it when they found out what it meant. But this being the internet, we of course have screenshots and they'll live on forever in infamy. Moving back to Quitner and the saga of McDonald's.com, upon realising that neither company gave all that much of a shit about owning their own domain name, Quitner went right ahead and bought McDonald's.com. Yeah, of course he did. Well, why not? McDonald's obviously didn't want it. What did he write on it? Well, what he did is he just made a simple splash page informing McDonald's that if they changed their mind and wanted to buy McDonald's.com from him, they could contact him at, and I'm not making this up, Ronald at McDonald's.com. Wow! I'm the luckiest clown I know! <laughs> oh, that's just sticking the boot in that, innit? <laughs> I'm fairly certain, Brad, the word power move was coined to describe this exact scenario. A guy buying the domain name of a huge multi-billion pound company and making them email him to an email address named after their own mascot to sheepishly ask him for their own name back. Oh! But we all know that McDonald's do now own McDonald's.com. Yes, they do. And you're probably wondering, so how did, like, you know, McDonald's.com change hands from Quitner to McDonald's? And what Quitner did is he wrote an article for Wired about, like, you know, this entire saga and the fact that McDonald's had no idea what the internet was and politely informed anyone from McDonald's reading that they could contact him at that email address I quoted earlier. And a couple of weeks after the article was published, someone in McDonald's with the authority to, like, you know, buy the domain off him caught wind of the story and had to email Ronald at McDonald's dot com asking Quitner to buy the domain back. Surely he just had to hand it straight back because there's laws in place to stop people doing that. There are today, there weren't back then. And Quitner had actually got in contact with legal experts who'd informed him that by all rights, the domain was his to do with as he pleased. And if he didn't want to sell it to McDonald's, he was under no obligation to do so. Or to put it another way, Quitner had McDonald's buy the balls. So I'm guessing after all this, he managed to get himself this huge payout. You'd think so, wouldn't you, given that one, McDonald's is a huge multi-billion pound company, and two, he'd made a good faith effort to inform the company that the domain was available, and after they told him they didn't want it, bought it himself. But no, Quitner, to his credit, didn't try and blackmail McDonald's into giving him, like, you know, a red and yellow Ferrari or Big Macs for life or anything like that. He simply asked them to make a $3,500 donation to a local public school so they could buy some computers so they could learn what the internet was. <laughs> I'm not sure of how exactly the conversation went down, but it's largely agreed Quitner probably could have like squeezed McDonald's for a few more dollars, but he just didn't want to. One, he didn't want to fight it in court, and two, he just found it funny that McDonald's themselves had to admit they didn't know what the internet was, and had to email a email address named after their own mascots that buy back their own name. So McDonald's basically just donated that $3,500, he handed the domain name over, and he wrote his article. <sighs> So I'm guessing anybody that follows you on Twitter knows exactly why we're talking about domain names. They probably do, yes, but for people who don't follow me on Twitter or watch these videos casually, the reason we're talking about domain names today and big companies not buying them is because I actually now run a company. But Carl, what do you mean you run a company? Well, for boring tax reasons, I was advised by an accountant friend of mine to start a company. And I was told that because this company will exist on paper, you can name it whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. So me, being me, chose the name Big Wangers Incorporated. Of course you did. And people at home are probably thinking, Carl, you're making this shit up. So I'm going to now get Brad to put a screenshot behind me, which is an official letter from the government telling me that I am now the managing director of a company called Big Wangers Incorporated, which you can look up on official government websites and see is a real company that exists in the United Kingdom with a sole, with a sole employee slash director slash shareholder who is called Carl Smallwood. <laughs> now, I thought this was fucking hilarious, so I announced it on Twitter because, like, you know, that's the kind of shit I do. And some dipshit saw that and thought, hang on, 
has Carl registered the domain name bigwangers.com? And the answer to that question is no. I do not need bigwangers.com, but this person didn't know that. So a couple of days after I put this on Twitter, I got a polite email from a nice fan informing me that if you go to the domain bigwangers.com or bigwangers.co.uk, or indeed any variation of bigwangers.something something something, it led you to a splash page from some idiots who bought it thinking they could extort money out of me into buying it back. They didn't just buy bigwangers.com no, though. they every single variation of Big Wangers that exists and put a helpful message on that page saying, Hi Carl, if you're currently searching for this domain, we bought it. If you'd like it back, you can buy it off us for £50. And I fucking lost it. Brad was in the house when I learned this and he heard me. I heard you screaming up the stairs. I was like, Brad, Brad, you're never going to believe what happened. Brad, come look, come look. I am so happy about this because this dumb joke that I made actually caused someone to go out and spend their own hard earned money on the domain Big Wangers. <laughs> so I emailed the email address linked on the website saying, oh, contact us, Carl, if you want to buy it, saying, uh, I don't actually need the domain name, so congratulations on spending your own money on big wires. <laughs> Eat shit, respectfully, Carl Smallwood, CEO of Big Wangers Incorporated. <laughs> and the, the actual people who bought the website did get in contact with me, so they're fans of the channel, and they bought it for a joke. Because you know, all jokes end with you trying to blackmail the person you're a fan of, but I digress. And they said, uh, yeah, we made a bet about whether you contact us or not. So I, I respect the hustle, but I don't need the website. So congratulations on owning bigwangers.com. <laughs>